Good Rising family. How's everything going? Hopefully, uh, actually, I closed the window, so call it. hopefully you guys can uh, hear okay. This is the freeways, you know, these California freeways and how loud they can get when you're close to the freeway. So if you guys can hear okay, okay, there we go. So if you guys can hear okay, okay, there we go. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Sorry. I had you guys plugged into the to the speakers here. Sorry about that. You guys hear everything okay now? Good rising family. Everybody hear everything okay? Shalom. Shalom. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys for all the love. I appreciate it. I feel it. So that my spirit is uh, definitely jumping for joy with all the uh, knowledge and understanding this, uh, their, their starting of their 2020. And we know that it's just pretty much a, I love that my brother told me about 2020 vision, getting more knowledge, understanding. Shalom family. Many blessings to you too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have seen a, um, a trailer a while ago for this, uh, Netflix, uh, series called Messiah. And uh, yesterday I got caught up watching it and it is just um, amazing. I said, when the most High gives you that, that 2020 vision to be able to open up your eyes, I'm not sure has anyone else uh, seen that show is there, they only got like one season and it was like um, about 10 episodes of Messiah. You guys, I'm going to see if anybody else had a chance to kind of check it out. I don't usually watch a lot of shows. People are always kind of recommending me to watch things and, I do when I can. I used to watch a lot more television. I mean, I don't watch as much as I as I used to because just just busy. Shalom, Lisa. Shalom, family. You know, um, but that <laughs> I was cracking up and laughing when I saw that um, the, the dude they picked to uh, play the Messiah. You know, and it's just it's funny because, like I said, it can be anybody, but it damn sure can't be us. They'll worship anybody. They'll worship anyone. But they're damn sure not going to worship a so-called Negro Messiah. They'll follow anybody. It's just kind of funny now because it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of this point. All right, damn, they figured out why Jesus isn't real. Damn it, these people. Uh-oh. It says, damn it, these people are waking up. Uh, we can't just keep trotting out white Jesus out here anymore. Um, you know what? Damn it. Just put some Arab out there now. Just throw some Arabs out there now. Can't can't fool them anymore with white Jesus. Can't give them, can't give them Cesare anymore. They're not listening to anything we have to say as far as Cesare is concerned. So damn it. Let's just flip it. And then now we'll just say that the Messiah is an Arab. And that's pretty much, I don't know why my thing keeps going in and out here like it wants to die. Um, but that's pretty much what, 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 what's, what's come down to. So you got some effeminate looking um, Arab dude out there who just pretty much looks like Jesus, but he's Arab. And, that, and, that, and usually when you bring it up, what do they say? Well, he would have been Middle Eastern. If you say, we you know, if you ask someone, what does, uh, what does, what did Jesus look like? Oh, well, he would have been Middle Eastern. So before it was okay for you guys to portray him as being white forever. You guys, have, you know, had him, had him white, you know, European, blonde hair, blue eyes forever for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now that we're waking up, it's like, okay, that's not going to work. So damn it, just, just roll him out. We'll see if we can at least, you know, keep some, some people listening to us. So just roll out the Arab dude. We'll have him play Jesus. And that's pretty much what the whole thing was. But it was funny because they put a lot of truth in there. They put a lot of truth. But the thing is, is they had it coming from an Arab looking man. Like a lot of the stuff he was saying, you know, made sense. And it was true. But the thing was, was that um, it darkened him up a little bit. But, you know, he damn sure wasn't us. And one thing in the first episode, which you know, struck me was they said, well, you know, this Messiah looking guy said, uh, well, 
he was telling the Arabs, you know, so he was preaching in front of a bunch of Arabs who were getting ready to get attacked in Damascus. And he was telling them that, um, well, no one has suffered as much as you guys have. You see, and that's exactly what, what it's the same thing over and over, over again. No one, at first it was no one has suffered more than the ish. And they had, you know, in World War II. Now it's, okay, we have an Arab Jesus, and now uh, he's telling the Arabs that no one has uh, suffered as much as you Arabs have suffered. Again, you're still trying, you're still trying to make sure that everything fits over there in the so-called Middle East. So forever it was Ish who was suffering the most. Now people are kind of catching on to this doesn't make a lot of sense. So now it's the Arabs that are now the ones who are suffering the most. You know, and they were mixing in their, the stuff with, with Islam uh, with this. And he was like, he wasn't a follower of Islam. Um, so it's kind of like how Messiah over here, you know, uh, white Jesus wouldn't necessarily be a Christian. You know, so like I said, a lot of the things that they were talking about, I said, it was just amazing. But the fact that they now try to say that the Arabs were are the most persecuted people in the world. I said, all that works as long as you ignore our history. As long as you ignore all the things that happened to our people when the Europeans got over here, you can pretty much say that every other group has has gone through punishment, has gone through torment, has been persecuted. And that's true. Other other nations have been have gone through rough times. They've gone through persecution. But as it says in Daniel, I would say 9 and uh, 9 11 or 9 and 12 that no one has been persecuted as much as the Hebrews. So I'm not saying that other nations haven't been persecuted. Of course they have. Other nations have gone to have had to pay, you know, prices as well. But no one has been as persecuted as our people. We've been persecuted for thousands of years under the oppression of many different um, countries. I said, so I'm not saying that other nations haven't been, you know, persecuted. But see, when you go out of your way to hide the persecution that we've been under, then there's a problem. No one's trying to hide the persecution that, you know, the um, Israelis would have went through in World War II. No one's trying to hide the, um, the things that happened to the Arabs or are still happening to the Arabs even at this point. No one's trying to hide the persecution that the Japanese went through during World War II or even, you know, during World War II. No one's trying to hide any of, the, any of those oppressions. No one's trying to hide any of the oppressions that was going on over in Europe. Okay? But the problem is is when you're trying to hide all of the persecutions that the true Hebrews have gone through. You see, that's when there's an issue. When you're trying to hide the worldwide persecution of the Hebrews, and that's, and now that that's the problem. You see that? That's the problem. And that's what's been and that's what's going on even in this in, in this mini series. You know, they talked about how he made some good points. He said um in the first episode, the Messiah guy was talking about how there was a big sandstorm coming. And pretty much he was talking about how the scales have tipped and um, history has ended. Now, the scales have tipped. That is true. The scales have tipped on our judgment. The cup is passing from us to the other nations. Yeah, I see that I'm buffering a lot. Sorry about that. You know, I'm just, uh, I can only control what I can control. I can just get this message out here. And if they mess with it, they mess with it. Let's just try the best we can with it, okay? But um, definitely um, the scales have tipped because history has ended. The, the, their ability to just lie about absolutely everything, the Most High is ending that. The Most High is making it so that he's bringing forth the whole truth, not just parts of the truth. Okay, and that's what's going on right now. The Most High is definitely um, moving. He's opening up. Oh, good. I'm glad you're not buffering over there. Um, if buffering refresh, working fine. This in. Okay, good. Um, it history has ended. The way of the other his story has ended is the way you should really be looking at it. When he says that, he says history has ended. His story. The uh, adversary's ability, the uh, adversary's ability 
to uh, control the narrative has ended. The uh, adversary's ability to make up his own story and everyone just following along hook, line, and sinker has ended. The Most High is now bringing the truth out to the people. So like it says, yes, his the scales have tipped and his story or his ability to just push his story has ended. Truth is being spread worldwide. And I want to thank everyone that has been supporting me because you are definitely integral in pushing this truth worldwide. We're doing this together as a nation. We are a nation of kingdom of, of kings, queens, princes, princesses, and we are to work together to do the will of the Most High. That is correct, Charles Jackson. Truth cannot be refuted. You cannot refute, they don't refute it, they just ignore it. That's why they hid all the persecution that we've gone through. They haven't, they haven't gone out of their way to hide anyone else's persecution. And like I said, I'm here to admit other nations have been persecuted. But they have not been persecuted to the extent of the true Hebrews. Everything about us is being hidden. You know, our lands, who we are, the persecution that we've gone through, who we are today, how we uh, fit into biblical prophecy. See, they went ahead and used a, an Arab dude and they made him like all part of biblical prophecy. They'll use anybody else. They damn sure don't want to use us. We had very minimal parts in the entire series. You know, they try to push the whole Israeli Arab thing going on and throughout the entire show. But that's the uh, narrative that this whole world has um, has been pushing. So even on the show, they just switched it. They made the bad guy good and the good guy bad. You know, and there was a part two. Um, in there at the beginning when they were, um, I think I want to say the first episode again, where they were sitting, um, the men were sitting together, a couple of men were sitting together and they were just talking and, um, the so-called Messiah guy was uh, like, uh, where are the women at? And, uh, the, one of the main Muslim guys says, you got to be kidding. There's not going to be any women in, in any kind of authority or leadership position. And a guy, uh, the Messiah guy said, uh, get up and go find me a woman and she can take your, sp your place. So uh, the story is uh, Messiah uh, on Netflix. What's up, Ock? Um, so, yes. You got to just check that part out just because, you know, women were, are de definitely going to be used by the Most High in this awakening. You know, I said he's, he's using them as well. And that's what it talked about, and that's definitely what it talked about um, in this in this in this uh, episode here, in episode one. I want to just look at here because I have a couple of things here, but that's all part of the whole thing of keeping um, keeping our nation separated and fighting. You know, I said the Most High has definite order how He wants things done. Okay, but that doesn't mean that the women are not going to be. Um, helping out with this awakening. They're definitely going to be integral in this awakening as well. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to check my notes here. Um, in the episode one, he was talking about, like I said, the Messiah guy was kind of preaching and he was talking about how they, people in this world pretend to uh, preach God's word and they just twist the meaning. Is that not true? Is that not exactly what has happened? that uh, this world has pretty much um, twisted God's word. You know, they pretend to preach it. They pretend to preach the truth, but they just twist God's words. They twisted it as soon as they started to take books out, hide books, hide information, control the narrative. That's exactly what they've done. And like I said, he makes a lot of good points. And that's like I said, that's, that's true. Hold on, I'm trying to make sure to start tripping here. Okay, let me cancel. Um, hold on. Talk about how this world has incurred God's wrath. You know, this world has now, you know, gotten to the point where it's going to incur God's wrath. And that's definitely what is happening right now. I see so many people talking about what was going on with um, the uh, Iranian general um, and the uh, bombing yesterday. 
I mean, and um, one of my sons was talking about how everyone was talking about how this is going to be my year on uh, Instagram. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of funny because everyone's like, yeah, 2020 is going to be my year and this, this, this and that. And all these people were well wishing everything. And then by like, the second day, a uh, top general uh, from Iran gets, uh, gets killed. And now everybody's talking about World War III and the end of the world. I'm like, yep, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. That's exactly how it is. Like people just think that things are just gonna continue like normal forever. And then, uh, but the most high is like, oh no, no. Yeah, they're talking about sending troops. I'm like, hey, I've heard this many times about, okay, this person got assassinated. This person got this. I'll believe it when I start to see um, some actions and some some serious things going on. When the most high, the most high is going to make them fight on in his time, in his turn. You know, so when the most high says go, it's go time. Okay, so that's all that's all up to the most high. But one thing was what he said was the scales have tipped and history has ended. And that is so true. The scales have tipped and his story has ended. Okay, the adversary's story and how he set up everything has ended. It's definitely taking place right now. Fifth world. It's everything. Everything is moving uh, quick. You sitting looking at, um, you know, I said how everything is going, how everything is moving. You know, I said uh, the uh, the uh, knowledge and understanding is just, um, it, it's coming out so fast. You know, I have so many uh, books and so much information I'm pouring through and trying to bring you guys videos as quickly as possible. I said because everything is definitely moving faster. I was talking to a sister this morning and she was telling me about the, um, the trucking industry and how like one of the biggest trucking in this, um, trucking uh, companies just collapsed and you, you know you couple that definitely with um, the food uh, the flooding in the in the Midwest and I would know that that's going to definitely affect um, food prices uh, food availability you know I said all, as many things that are happening um, die-offs in the ocean um, you know, we all know the things going on with Fukushima and everything else. They just hide all that information. I'm like, that was a um, extinction level event. That's an ELE. You know, you can't fix that. Exactly. A new breed. The spring food shortages are coming. Yeah, I mean, that's the most high is making it so that people who can see can see what's coming. You can see that the most high is ending. The scales are tipped. Uh, myself, I definitely, I'm in the trucking industry and everyone better get ready. Exactly. See, I mean, as a community, we definitely have uh, many people from like all over, all over the world. We have people with from all walks of life. So we know we can get inside information because we have people all over the place. You know, it's like I said, yes, the scales have tipped, as he said, and history has ended. His story has ended. Yes, there are definitely black Arabs. I'm not saying, again, when we're talking about a particular group of people, we're never, I'm never saying all of these people are this or all of these people are that. Crops in the Midwest only produce 70% of average yield, which shows off yearly production. Um, was it even that high? They, they actually got to 70%? Because I mean, I remember how so many things, I mean, so many of the uh, farms lost everything. They had crops, um, they had pro crops from previous years and granaries and then those granaries got destroyed too. You know, and yes, definitely talking about these uh, pastors and these churches uh, twisting scripture. That, that's exactly what's been going on. You know, they were never, they were never supposed to uh, have our scriptures. They were never ordained to teach our scriptures. You know, somebody bashing, uh, bashing Big Judah. I can care less about that dude. He can talk all he wants, man. I said the Most High is um is pretty much showing and proving on who he's dealing with and who he's not dealing with, you know? Everyone's, uh, many people have gotten whitewashed over, you know, over history. I see that someone made a comment, you know? I said, so many groups, I said, it's gonna be, like I said, is Israelites in every single nation. So, and that's all part of history, you know, these, these scales tipping and history being done. Because, like I said, many of the pictures that they use and many of the things that they've put up um, do not represent the truth. So nothing, nothing new. You know, 
Oh yeah, I definitely keep it moving, man. I'm not worried about what people say. People have been saying stuff about me for for years. I mean, it doesn't doesn't bother me. You know, they could, they'll still say stuff even going forward. They're gonna say stuff all the way to the end. See, what we're seeing is prophecy being fulfilled. We know that in uh, what was it, Matthew 28. See, what this video here does, this this is this Messiah series does this. It talks about it in Matthew 28. Let me get it really quick because I already have Matthew, no, 24, sorry, 24 and 30. It says uh, this. And then shall the, uh, and then shall appear the sign of the son of the most high in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All of the tribes of the earth will mourn. Because when the most high cracks those skies open, it's going to be something that no one, most of these people have no clue about. It was, it's going to be a person or it's going to be an entity they're going to see that they never would have guessed that the son of the most high will look like. You see that? So when they put out, okay, they've already done white Jesus forever. Now we got a, now we got a story about Arab Jesus coming back. Okay. So now you can't say that, oh, if the, if the Most High cracked the skies open and it was an Arab person, that all the tribes would be, all the tribes of the earth would be mourning because they've already seen someone portrayed as an Arab Jesus. They've already seen someone portrayed as a white Jesus. So that wouldn't surprise the tribes of the earth. But you know what would surprise the tribes of the earth? When they cracked the skies open, and then the father, the son, looks like a so-called Negro. The last one that they don't want to use for absolutely anything. You see that? The, the people that they don't want to use to portray anything good in this world. Then it would be like, damn. That's why all the tribes of the earth are going to be shocked. Because, like you said, like I said in the, in the title, the Messiah can be anybody, but he damn sure can't be you. He damn sure can't be a so-called Negro. You see that? So that's all part of prophecy. So keep, please keep on throwing out every other Jesus you guys can come up with. I'm waiting for Japanese Jesus. Can I get myself a Korean Jesus? Can I get myself the Hamite Jesus? Throw them all out there, okay? So that then when the Most High cracks the skies open and you see a son for reals, then you guys are gonna be shocked. You're like, well, we've already seen all the other ones. You know, we've already seen all the other Jesus. Yeah, you've already seen the, I forgot the movie. It was the one uh, where was Ice Cube and uh, dang it. I mean, if you guys remember the name of the movie and he was like the cop and the guys were going to school and they were like in some kind of a church and they were talking about Korean Jesus, you know? And uh, I don't know if you guys remember that name of that, of, of that movie, you guys can tell me. Um, but it was like, you know, why are you guys, you know, doing that in front of Korean Jesus? Cause they'll put Jesus, they'll make everybody 21 Jump Street, thank you. There we go. <laughs> They'll make Jesus anybody, but he just can't be you. You know? So they do that all over the place. You know, they put Jesus up, you know. It's 21 Jump Street, yes. Um, I talk about Korean Jesus. Like I said, they'll put Jesus. He can be anybody, but he damn sure can't be you. And that's exactly what you get with this with this uh, show. You know? And uh, what was crazy in this, though, was this. Let me go back to my picture real quick. Because I, I had to take a couple pictures. Some of the stuff that was going on. Um, at the end, I want to say the eighth episode, the, uh, the so Messiah was kidnapped, and he was taken to see the president. The president didn't want it on record or anything, so you know they kind of kidnapped him. All oh, yep, twelve million acres burning in Australia. Exactly, there's stuff happening all over the place. So what happened was the president was a Mormon. Who would have saw that coming? The president of the United States in this show was a Mormon. Now, they said that um, they were talking about the Messiah guy says pretty much, aren't you a Latter-day Saint? He's like, yeah. He's all, well, don't you, do you believe that God still talks to us today? He said, yeah. Well, he goes, well, I'm talking to you now. Exactly. The second stick. Exactly. It was like, 
I have never heard of a, a Mormon president, but the thing was they threw that in there so that they could talk about, you know, the second stick. Talking about, remember how I talked about that before? He said that, um, he said, um, in one of the videos I was talking about how the Bible pretty much goes up to about 70 AD. And that if you only believe in the Bible and that's all that you look at, then you're pretty much left to guess about everything else going forward. It's like the Most High stopped talking to, um, to the people if you only read the Bible. And that there's nothing new except for that. Well, when you get into the second stick, who then picks up, you know, to, the rest of the story, that's exactly what it goes with. The, the second stick finishes up the story. The second stick is now finishing up all the things that were left out of the first stick. And you have to put the two sticks together in order to understand what was going on from the beginning to the end. You see that? So they put it, they put it right in front of your face. So you he, it pretty much needed the second, you know, you, you needed a, the Mormon here to represent the second stick. You talked about the, his book, uh, the Bible, I mean, okay? <clears throat> so they, they threw all that in there in this discussion and about how the Most High is still talking to us today. So, and as we know, you need it, you need the second stick, you need the Book of Moore and his other books in order to get the rest of the understanding. Because so he's pretty much telling you in that section, if you only read the Bible, you believe that no, the, the Most High doesn't talk to you anymore. And that if you believe, you know, the Most High is still talking to you, then you need these other books. You need the Book of Mormon because now the Most High is talking to you at the end. You see that? I mean, they throwing it, they throwing it right in your face. But you got all these people still talking about, well, no, we don't, we don't agree with that. We don't, we don't accept that. But okay, well, I guess that, that's cool. Don't, don't accept it. That's fine. But we know that the Most High is still talking to us today. So he's pretty much saying that pretty that the Book of Moore. Um, you know, is, is how the Most High is talking to us today. And I want to say that was, uh, in, uh, I want to say episode eight. Okay. I'm going to be a spoiler in case you guys want to go and check it out. I said, but the fact that you got a Mormon president, you got them talking about how, you know, you're a latter day saint. You're a saint at the end of time. You're a saint at the end on the, in the end days. And he's like, do you believe the Most High is still talking to you today? And the president said, yes. Then there you go. You know, it's, it's not even about the Mormon religion. We know it was about the book. It's about the book. The Most High is still talking to his people. <laughs> yes, 12. I won't ruin it by telling too much, telling you guys too much. You know, I'm telling you if you wanted to skip up to eight and kind of hear that little back and forth, uh, you know, go right ahead. But it's not going to ruin it for you. But like I said, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of stuff in there. I just wanted to say that whole part about the Mormon. I said that was like, damn, what are the odds? So they're they're putting they're putting uh, truth right in front of your face. They're showing you right there in front of your face that um, you know we don't have a we've never had a Mormon president. Why throw why was it important to throw a Mormon president into this uh, into this right here into the series? You know, I said because they're just they're tying it all in together. They're tying all these pieces together, you know, and uh, except the guy, you know, I said he, he had some good stuff. A lot of things that our father is definitely sharing with us, but they had to give it to you from another Gentile. They had to give you that perspective from another Gentile. Can't be from someone like us because someone like us is going to be a lot more forceful because they know how we've been treated. They know how, um, the, how the Most High deals with people who treat us badly. They know because it's all over the Bible how, we, how people have things have happened to them for treating us badly. They know that, you know, I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. So, you know, the curses have been coming steady. You know, so <clears throat> they can't stop prophecy. Tessie, that's, that's very true. They cannot stop prophecy. The prophecy is being fulfilled. His story has ended and they put it in there. You know, and except they want to control the narrative, though. They still want to control who they say has been the most persecuted. All the while while hiding all the things that have been happening to us. Okay. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a man. Go read Apocalypse. Okay. All right. If you say so. 
I've read plenty of books, and like I said, they're gonna. If you haven't realized yet, they can throw, they can interject whatever it is that they want to interject into our books. They've been able to do that for a very long time. John Brown, the second stick would be the Book of Mormon, the uh, Northern Kingdom's records. You have to put the Southern Kingdom's records together with the Northern Kingdom's records in order to understand what happened at the beginning all the way to the end. I've talked about that, about the, um, the statue and Daniel. The Bible deals with uh, up to the Roman captivity, but then the revived Roman Empire and the feet, that information uh, isn't dealt with in the Bible. So pretty much everyone's left to conjecture and guess. Okay, so the Most High brought, had our records over here so that the other nations couldn't taint them. Because that was all part of the uh, prophecy that over there in the um, in the east, the uh, Gentiles would get our records and they would taint them. They would take books out. They would interject things, change things, things like that. That was all part of biblical prophecy or prophecy in the book of Nephi. And that's exactly what happened. And then when they got here, the, our books and our records were more pure. They had not had a chance to infiltrate them. And they were much older, yes, and better, okay? So, and then he realized that the vast majority of things that they learned over there originated over here. And it was, it was kind of like, you know, the things you get when you don't have Gentiles messing with your stuff. Okay? Yes, the Book of Moore, exactly. Thank you guys for sharing and, and helping the brother sister out that was asking earlier about what was the uh, second stick. And that's how we have to do as a nation, is come together and, and help people out. You know, help, you know, I, I just have to sometimes be a little more patient. You know, I said people do ask me things and sometimes I'm not as patient as I need to be. You know, so Father, forgive me. Brethren, forgive me sometimes if I'm not as patient as I should be with questions and things like that. Um, because sometimes, you know, it's like I, <clears throat> if I'm doing things in college, I can't always go back and, and go back to kinder. You, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm sure that you guys hopefully can understand that. Okay. And so I appreciate it when people have questions, if you guys can answer, um, if they have questions on the comment board, as long as, you know, I don't mind questions as long as um, it's not, I, I don't have time to go back and forth and, and everything else. We're at a point now that if you really want to know something, it's not, it's never been as easy as it is now. You, all you got to do now is go back and look at old videos. Okay. And then do your own research. Exactly. You know, I said, I, I can only do so much. I said, I'm doing, um, I'm going forward with a lot of other information. So if you have questions, definitely put them in the comment board, but it's not, it's not necessary to argue. Okay. I said, because no one can force anybody to get this truth. Either the most high is going to give it to you or he's not, you know, and if you really want to know something, it's never been as easy as just scrolling back some videos and press and play. So if you really want to study, you want to know certain things, go back, go back to other brethren's videos, scroll, scroll back and look back. Okay. Put in the work. Like I said, study to show yourself approved. That's for every single individual. Okay. Because now we're, we're moving forward. We're seeing how the, the scales have tipped and his story is coming to an end. And now we're looking, we're looking for, for the fulfillment of prophecy. Yes, you're either in or you're out. I'm looking at the fulfillment of prophecy. I'm looking for the restoration of our people. You know, I'm definitely still reading a lot and sharing as much as I possibly can. But every day there is events going on that we can easily see that the Most High is now moving quickly. The spirits are restless. The Most High is restoring his people. He's restoring our knowledge and our understanding. Yes, it's not about the Mormon religion. None of these things are about the religions. Everything is about the scriptures and the books. And then parsing through the books and, you know, getting rid of the BS that they put in them to keep us out of the books and concentrating on the information that the Father wants us to have. See, they've shared a lot of our information as long as we thought it was them. 
That's why they pushed the whole white Jesus. The white people were here before the natives. They were the ones that established the society. So we have everything that we have here um, is attributed to white people. So if you're going to push that, then you got to push the fact that black skin is a curse and that, um, you know, white skin is a blessing. Uh, and it just interject all that stuff into our books. And if you can't see past that, then I, there's nothing I can do for you. If you can't see past that, uh, look at when you have discussions with people. How much truth do they tell you when you, when you just have a discussion with people? I mean, I talk to people all the time. And I mean, like the amount of lies and, um, you know, untruths that they say. I mean, no one's telling you 100% of the truth. Because most people have been educated with a bunch of lies. So, you know, I'll sit here and hear people talking about, you know, how hard people have worked for everything they have and how, um, you know, the, the God has blessed them with money. And God has blessed them with their kids going to, you know, going to college and, and, and all this other stuff. And then you say like, okay, well, the most high, I don't think he really gave you that money so that you can go buy three or four more houses. I don't think he gave you that money. I don't think he's blessed you so you can go buy five or six more cars. I don't think he's really blessing you by letting you get your kids go to college and learn pay $50,000 a year to get lied to. Are those really blessings or is that blessings of this society? You see, just when you just have regular conversations, when you really think about the most high and what he wants, and then you try to compare that to what's going on, you realize that most people's views of life are backwards. Yes, gospel of the Holy 12. Yes, the gospel of the 12 patriarchs is money. Ridiculous. So much information in there. Okay, it has programmed, we've been programmed and, you know, if you talk to people about Jesus and you talk about how his true people were people of color, um, it doesn't matter. That's, what they, that's the first thing to say. It doesn't matter what he looks like. Okay, well, it's been mattering for the last few hundred years. Oh, it doesn't matter. You see, so it's like, you got to learn how to just listen to what people say. Now, if they're doing that stuff to us now, in 2020, when we've been awakened, how much worse was it a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, when they could lie to us and we had, we did not have the spirit of discernment. See, they, they're still living like it's still 1820 and they can say whatever and we're not going to call them on their BS. They we're not going to check them on their, on their lies. You see? See, now we're, the most High has given us knowledge and understanding where we can check these people when they say BS and garbage. So if we can check them literally, you know, when we're talking, why can't we check them now with the books that they have, um, you know, that they, which one called, that they bring out or they've brought out a long time ago. You see that? So that, I mean, that's it, you know? Someone said they're checking me. I don't know if they're checking each other or whatever else. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Let me get rid of this guy. There we go. All right. Let me get rid of some of these people. So, yes. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I wanted to bring that information. I'm not going to say anything else right now about, this, about the show. Well, hold on. Let me check my notes. Maybe I will. Um, mm -mm -mm. Maybe later. I'll give you guys a chance to watch it. And maybe we'll come back together and we'll... Uh, We'll talk uh, a little bit more about it and see what you guys have seen in it. And you're pulling out, but they're putting out the truth in so many different avenues. And now we understand why they're doing it. See, the Most High is making them. The show again is Messiah on Netflix. You know, I said I I ended up watching uh, the entire um, series yesterday, the entire season yesterday. I never do that. I'll never sit there and just watch. Um, one series or anything like that for that long. But I was just seeing so much uh, confirmation in the time that we're in. Like I said, it's an absolutely beautiful time to be alive because now we can look at just about anything and you can see um, the truths as well as how they, um, they lie about things. You know? Uh, so yeah, definitely, we, we'll definitely see you know, about uh, this truth. But I said, the more we look at things, you know, the, the, the Return of the Jedi, well, not Return of the Jedi, the, um, the new Star Wars movie, they got stuff. They got stuff everywhere now. And you can see it. You know, and you can totally see it. But on that note, uh, family, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Uh, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement 
to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit, acknowledge Ritihawashai. Shalom.